In this video, we're going to look at some more examples of uh, converting um, vectors that are in expressed in terms of their rectangular components, uh, re-expressing them as a polar vector, or having a polar vector and expressing that in terms of its uh, rectangular components. In the past couple of videos, we've been talking a little bit about phasers and two-dimensional vectors and so forth. I think it was in video 71 we explained why we have to start using the J notation. J is the square root of negative 1. So we've covered all that in the previous videos. Let's just have a little bit more uh, practice here in converting rectangular vectors to polar form or polar vector in terms of its uh, rectangular components. So here we have for the first one 3 plus j4. So we get it just to make a crude graph. Here is x and now we no longer have the y-axis but we have jy and we're going over 3 units and then going up four units. So the vector might look something like this. And if we want to express this in polar form, we need to know two things. Its magnitude and the angle that it makes with the positive x-axis. So its magnitude would be the square root of 9 plus 4 squared is 16 that's the square root of 25, or that's 5. So we have a magnitude of 5. Now to determine theta, we know here we have this triangle. That's a vertical distance of 4 and a horizontal distance of 3. So the tangent of theta that equals the side opposite 4 divided by the side adjacent 3. Well, that's 1.33. Or theta, to be expressed as a different way, theta would be the inverse tangent of 1.33. And you can do it out of your calculator, or we just looked it up in a book, and that is approximately a little bit more than 53 degrees. We just run it off at 53. So this vector 3 plus j4 could be expressed as 5, its magnitude, and then the angle is 53 degrees. So that's it for the first example. That was pretty straightforward I hope. Let's take a look at the second one. Here we have minus 6 plus j3. Um, obviously we're going to be in the second coordinate. Now let's just see if we can make a crude sketch of it. So here is x, j, y, and we're going over 6 units and then up three units. So it might look something like this. And if we're going to express this as a polar vector, again we need to know its magnitude and the angle. The angle that it makes with the positive x-axis. Remember when we're dealing with polar vectors, the relevant angle is determined by starting at the positive x-axis and then going counterclockwise until you reach the position of the vector. So that is our angle of interest. And let's see, we know that this is the vertical distance is 3, this is minus 6, so we ought to be able to determine this angle right here, we'll call that beta. So the tangent of beta now we're in the second quadrant, so we know that any angle in the second quadrant has a negative tangent. We discussed that too in our 
think of video 71. Um, that was from this diagram. The cosine is negative and the sine is positive. But what we can do is, realizing that fact, is to say, well, the tangent of beta equals 3 divided by 6, or that's 1 half. So beta equals the inverse tangent of 1 half. And that is, looking it up in tables, 26 and 6 tenths degrees. So I realize that angle there is 26 and 6 tenths degrees. So this angle, theta, will be 180 minus 26 and 6 tenths degrees. And I think that's like 153 and 4 tenths degrees. So that is this angle. And again, um, we would say that the tangent of this angle, the tangent of 153 and 4 tenths degrees, that would be the same thing as the tangent of 26 and 6 tenths degrees, realizing we're in the second quadrant here, and therefore we would have a minus sign before that. But when we're determining the actual magnitude of this angle right here, when we're doing that, we can ignore the fact this is a minus 6, and then just say, okay, this angle is 26 and 6 tenths degrees, realizing that it's an angle here um, that's in the second quadrant. So, so long as we keep in mind as to how we're going to use this information, we can just take this angle as an absolute value here, ignoring the minus sign and just calling that 6, but realizing it's this angle that we're going to determine right here. This is the angle that we have to ultimately determine, though. And of course, we can do that because here we have 180 degrees minus this angle would equal our angle theta. So we have 180 degrees minus this angle, 26 and 6 tenths degrees, gives us our angle of interest. So if we know that, now we need to know the magnitude of it, of this vector. So that would be the square root of 36, 6 squared, plus 3 squared is 9. That's the square root of 45, and I think that's pretty close to 6.7. So this vector in polar form would be 6. 0.7 angle of 153 and 4 tenths degrees. So that's it for that problem. Then we have the polar vector 10, 230. So this is the angle that it makes with the positive x-axis. So what would this look like? So here's x, j, y. If we go from here to here, that's 180 degrees, but we need to have a total of 230 degrees. So once we get to here, we have to go down another 50 degrees. So this angle here is 50 degrees. And so this entire angle is 230 degrees. Now, we want to express that in terms of its 
X component and its Y component. Um, and we can do that. This has a magnitude of 10. So we have this triangle like this. And we know what this angle is. So we can say, well, 10 times the cosine of 50 degrees, that would be the horizontal distance. 10 times the sine of 50 degrees, that would be the vertical distance. Or we can state it like this. 10 times the cosine of 230 degrees equals 10 times the cosine of the smaller reference angle, 50 degrees, with the negative sign before it, because we know we're going to the left of the origin. So that would be the x component. Then the y component, 10 times the sine of 230 degrees. That's 10 times the sine of the smaller reference angle, 50 degrees, but again with the minus sign before because we know we're going downward. So it would be like that. And the cosine of 50 degrees I think is 0.646 and the sine of 50 degrees is 0.7 Six, six. So this would be minus 6.46 and we're going down 7.66. So minus 6.46 and then minus 7.66. So our polar vector 10 230 degrees would be equal to minus 6.46 then minus J 7.66. So here is the polar vector. Here it is expressed in terms of its rectangular components. And again, when it's expressed like this, then that tells us it's between 180 degrees and 270 degrees. So we know it's going to be somewhere here in the third quadrant. This would be 180 degrees. That would be 270 degrees. So it's somewhere in between the two. So we know there's a smaller angle here of 50 degrees. And we can use that angle then, the smaller reference angle, to determine the x component and the y component, realizing that down here in the third quadrant, the x component is going to be negative and the y component, likewise, is going to be negative. And so there's our final expression. Um, anyway, that's it for this video. We just want to take a little bit more practice in, do, in dealing in how to convert between polar coordinates and coordinates expressed in terms of the rectangular components because when you're dealing with electrical circuits now um, when it comes when you have to multiply vectors together as we'll show in the next video it's convenient to multiply them and divide them when they're expressed as a polar vector so quite often what's done is if you have a vector like this or two vectors that are expressed in terms of their rectangular coordinates and you want to multiply them or divide them, um, it's common then to express each one in terms of polar coordinates and then do the uh, multiplication or division, whatever you have to do. And why it's so much more convenient to multiply or divide a polar vector, that is what we will uh, uh, consider in the next video. And I think this video is number 72 in our series, Electrical uh, Circuit Analysis, and the, uh, the playlist for all the videos is at the website, digital-university.org.